Hi, I'm Stephen Cronin and I'd like to thank you so much for joining me today. This will be today's watercolour subject. It's a photograph I took of Sutton Park. And before I start, I'll just quickly whiz through the materials. Finally got a new brush. Now, I followed the link in the description in every video now. Um, bought this from Amazon. Um, I get so many people asking me, where do you get your brush from? I've, there's a link in every video description now. The Ron Ranson Hake by Pro Art Large. Um, and this is what you'll get. Nice bit of kit. Use it on every painting I do. Um, also linked down there are all the paints, which are Ultramarine, Lemon Yellow, Payne's Grey, Alizarin Crimson, Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber and Light Red. And you'll also see linked down there where you can buy the paper, 15 by 11, 130 pound Fabriano. So one quick final look at the uh, the photo. And what we will have in this is a lot of opportunities. What I'll probably do is get a lot of this in and then just wet it all and then just pull the reflections in, maybe in one go, with uh, while the paper's still wet so it all blends together nicely. So starting off, um, something I like to do every time I get a new brush. I like to have a good sniff. Just reminds me of when I was first starting, starting off painting. Of all that hate brush, it's got that smell to it. And I used to rinse all the um, the watercolor videos on Love Film. That's how I started to started to paint. I got about I don't know if they have it anywhere other than the UK. Um, got about thirty DVDs, all various artists. And uh, I just rented out every single one and just tried to take something from from each of them. So that was just raw sienna. This is ultramarine. I might just pop a bit down there as well. Um, a lot of trees this side, so not going to see too much sky. So I'm not going to worry too much um, about that side. It's just that'll do for now. Um, now I'm going to mix the two colours together. A bit of raw sienna, ultramarine. the paper is still wet it's not going on very strong it's still pretty loose just trying to get some sort of variation in there and you're just just trees right in the far background not too much detail just sort of on mass and what I might do is just pull down something while I've got the colour on the brush so I put that excess water at the bottom. Bit of lemon yellow. Just a little bit of something, something green growing down there. And then that's all I'm going to do for the background. What I want now is a load of trees. So I'm going to switch to the little brush. Put a bit of paint on there. A bit of water rather. A bit of brown, a bit of blue. You'll need plenty of water. Now I'm just gonna pull up a load of little trees. These are right in the background now, so there's not much detail. I'll say in the background, they're still in front of the ones I've just put in using the big brush. These are just reflections I'm pulling down. I'll put some more reflections in when I've when I've done more of the foreground. So I just reload the brush, a few more uh, trees going in, a few more reflections going down. A bit more brown, a bit more blue. And then 
bunu tabi Yine bir kapçeriz Just the odd little Tweaks coming off here and there, branches Not so much happening really At this, uh, this uh, distance What I'm going to do now is clean the brush, take the excess off on the tea towel. I'm going to give it a little bit of raw sienna and just work out the lay of the land. It's quite a high rise line up here, we're sort of two thirds of the way up. So it sort of goes off to there, it comes down, comes down to about there. All this is going to be water. Then something like that. And then we've got this right up there like that. And then it sort of comes down. Comes down there like that. So that just gives us our basic <coughs> composition. So paper stretch a little bit. You can stretch before you start painting if you so wish. I just stretch it as I go along. It's only a case of unclipping those two bulldog clips. So what I want to do next is put in some more trees. So because I've got a new brush now I'll get a nice sharp chisel edge. And I'm going to use this just to put in the uh, the sort of middle middle layer of trees. I like to do it in three three layers. And the paper's still a bit wet, so it'll soften off a little bit. It feels, honestly, it feels so nice to be able to put those in nice and thin. In fact, if I, if I get my other brush out, this is the brush I was using up till yesterday. You can see it's worn down a little bit, but you can see the top. And that, that was about as sharp as I could get it. It was totally worn, but you can see now with a real sharp edge now with a new brush. I don't know where you can see that, as opposed to the old brush where it was just all frayed and, and old. So I think this was about eight and a half quid, but they're uh, you know they're not, they're not the cheapest brushes, but they're well you get what you pay for. I've, I've some of the the rubbish I've seen in the shops. Honestly, it's enough to put you off painting before you've even started. I strongly recommend. Just paint a little bit extra and get a decent brush. It'll be well worth it. I mean, that'll last quite a long time. I mean, they don't last me forever, but then again, I'm I'm sort of painting almost every day, so I'll get through quite a quite a lot of them. Plus, I, you know, give them a bit of abuse. So, my intent to wear down a little bit. So that's a sort of middle layer, and then oops, I don't know, he's thin in it, that's very thin. I'm, not, I'm thinking I might, I might have done them a bit too thin. Look okay, how thin that is, that, that's thinner than the, the trees the, behind it. And that's all I'm going to worry too much about it. So a little bit of this and that, and a bit of the other all over. Right now for the uh, before I put the thickens in, let's just do a little bit of little bit of something on here. Got some muddy bank down there. Little 
sort of bit in there with the uh, the card. <coughs> right, what I'm going to do next now? I think we're ready to go with the the big trees. So I don't know why I clean the brush because I'm going for a dark colour. You don't need to go um, and clean your brush if you're going dark. You only really need to clean your brush if you want to go back to a lighter colour. Right then, so now we've got. I'm just wondering before I put these big trees in, whether to, to wet it. Yeah, I might just do that. Put, oh, just put the brush in the uh, in the water by mistake. Do what I just. Uh, actually, yes. I'm going to wet it first. Now the reason I've dried it before I wet it is because I want to keep as much as what I've already done there as possible. <coughs> if it was still wet it would have gone everywhere as soon as I'd done this. Because the paper, the paint was dried on the paper, most of it will sort of stay in place. So now I'm going to go a bit of brown, a bit of blue, dark colour, and I'm going to put in some of these big, big trees now. That's too blue. I'm going to pop the reflections in at the same time. Giving up there like that, you know, giving down there. I'm just soaking up the water that's gathering at the bottom of the paper. Really big ones going in there. Just copy them straight down. Try and get them the same sort of angle reflected into the water. Soaking up that water. There's our trees, and then what I might do next is switch to the rigger brush, get a dark mix on. We just need a few, a few branches and twigs and things going on. And don't forget to reflect what you've done. A few branches and twigs over there. Reflections down there. You come down off the top. A little bit of reflections going down there. And then what I'll do once I've put these uh, branches on. Uh, just put a bit. Of, I'm just going to put a little bit of foliage. A little bit of foliage, and then hopefully that should look like my tree. So I've just cleaned the brush. Scuff the airs up on the tea towel. 
I'm just going to go into some flavour each colour. So I'm just going to start off with lemon yellow. Get the reflections. Get a raw sienna as well. And don't forget to reflect everything you've done. I've added a bit of ultramarine there to it. I think it's time to start working on this sort of this area now. So first thing I want to do lots of green. So I'm just just popping these off all the leaves and things that are growing on the in the hedges and stuff growing in the uh, in the river banks. What we have got now, we just need a few more trees on this right hand side. So I'm mixing a bit of brown, a bit of the blue, so I've got a dark tree trunk colour. And we've got some of these. In. We've got some bigger ones up there. There's a few more. It's going to be a bit of raw sienna. floating around all over the place. So I'm just going to strengthen this river bank. So I'm just going a bit of brown, a bit of blue. slightly. I mean can't resist with the uh with the car you gotta I won't stop that lapping eventually. Little boulders here and there. Paint over what you're not cleaning on. I've just done a bit too much there. A few stones down the bottom. Well, I've just uh, I'll just pause it for a minute, just have a look at this, and. I'm, it ain't working for me. I'm just going to re-wet all the, the water area, I think, and just have another bash at the reflection.
I'm tempted to just re-whip the whole thing, which I, actually I'm going to do it. Let's just do it. I'm just going to re-whip the whole painting. And then bash everything in as fast as I can, just see what happens. Let's just start off. Just get a bit of green in there. More green, a few reflections, and I'll just try and tidy it up as I can when as I go along. I'm just thinking a bit more. Pop these in again. A bit stronger. Then I'm just try and I want to create a bit more sort of oomph to the whole thing. It was just fucking very, very boring. To the lighter colour. Get a lemon yellow in there, I think. Just fix some of that down there. Get a bit of this, bit of that. A bit more going on in the background, I want, I think. A few reflections. A bit more green over there. that water gathering at the bottom. Um, put a few, few twigs in. These are going, uh, we want these going a bit thicker, a bit more thicker. Let's take that a flick. Generally trying to copy what I'm doing above, below. A few more reflections, some big ones, big leaves up there, big ones down there. Leaves coming right off, big branches coming up there. Big stuff coming right the way down. Some growing up right off, off this side. And just get those banks, those banks down a little bit. Just try and crack more, a bit more of a, of a slope down there. Pull down some reflections as I'm giving up. Just get a little bit higher. Gonna paint. Just dollop some raw sienna over the ones where there's a bit too much. Mm -hmm. Just need a bit more structure down there, I think. The brown. Try to make the water a bit more, a bit more, uh, I don't know what the word is, 
So I've just got a just a plain damp brush. I'm just pulling the wire of the 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 paint off the banks. I'm just pulling them into the water. Just, uh, just I'm, I'm just experimenting really is what I'm doing. Get that a bit cleaner. It's like uh, sort of like ripples on the water. I don't want to overdo it. I just want to try and create some sort of subtle ripply effect without getting too balmy. Get in there, that looks a bit, a bit naff. Just trying to see if I can improve this little bit up there. So again, I'll just pause it for a second while I've went out a look from the from the back of the room. Um, I think it definitely looks better than it did. I'm glad I wet it all over and did it. Um, see, sometimes you have to just take a chance. I mean, I didn't have a clue how it was going to work out. But generally, if you get some down that you're not overly keen on, just dry it. Rewet it and just have a have another bash at it. I think I'm almost there to be honest with you. Um, just pull that, pull that tight against the board. A few little little leaves or something. Not leaves and um, the grass just can't quite get. I need the pipes to be dry for this to stand out. I think I might just leave it at that actually. Differentiate a bit of, bit of sort of really dark greeny colour, bit of lemon yellow, bit of Payne's grey. Just, just make this bank here stand out because it's, it's sort of blending in with the background there. I just want this to stand out a bit better. That's, that's a bit better, I think. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm just switching to the little brush now, bit of brown, bit of blue. 
I'm just going to paint a little man in. Just walking away. There's our little focal points. Um, normally I put shadows and trees and stuff, but I think, I think the shadows and the lights are already, already in there, really. I don't think I'm gonna mess about with the shadows. Um, I think I'm gonna leave it like that, to be honest with you. Um, all I might need is a little bird flying through there sideways. I'm just going to stick my name down there. Right, let's see what that looks like with the mounts on. So this is the finished painting um, in the main. So let's compare it to the photograph. So this was the uh, photograph I was working with. And I've, I've changed one of the things, but I've just tried to make it a bit more dramatic. So with this one, we've got a, quite a high rise in line rather than the normal third of the way up I often do. I've gone two thirds of the way up. Um, the sort of sky, uh, pretty much sort of weak uh, ultramarine wash for the sky area. Can't see too much between the trees. But as I, th I think with most landscapes, the, the key is to create some sort of sense of light. So I've, I've sort of got the lights area there. It's no coincidence that if you look at it, I've sort of got the, the lightest areas against the, the darkest area here, just for that, that contrast, that sort of illusion, light and shadows. Um, I mean, the, the trees are quite uh, quite thin going up in the in these um, shoreline ones. In the paints, and I've done them a bit sort of thinner and, and more menacing, just to try and add some oomph. Try and put all the reflections in at the same time. Obviously, it makes it easier because you've already got the, the colour on your brush. Um, and then something I've only really recently started doing, getting the first, what well, maybe as a beginner I, I would have um, left it, but not happy with it. So I've just re-wet the whole area and sort of tried to bash it in as fast as I could. So this way it sort of helps create a bit more depth and, and interest. With like two, you know, two, uh, two washes. As soon as I put the rocks in, I knew I should have done it left-handed because if you know, if the, the sort of light's coming from over here, I've got the light on the wrong side. You can see, it's sort of got light on the left and the shadow on the right. Really, I should have done it the other way around, um, and so that the light sort of hitting it from this this angle, I think, would have looked a bit better. And then just as a focal point, got a little man walking his dog. That's it for today's painting. Um, thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe if you'd like to join our community. I'd be love. I'd love to have you with us. Um, keep practicing. Any questions, please ask. And I'll see you again soon.